Hi, good day. I'm Teacher MJ from Philippines. I'm very happy to be part of this is part um, of a uh, program of innovators. Uh, I'm very happy to to be part of Google Family, not only in our country but also uh, in entire globe. Thank you very much for this opportunity. <clears throat> so for today, I I will just uh, give. Um, some insight about the Chrome Music Lab. <clears throat> it becomes so interesting for me as elementary teacher and one of my subjects is music. Um, in third year of um, grade, uh, they will uh, start uh, studying notes. So, but in some public school, uh, we have, we are very lack of material so we need to uh, we need to have uh, materials that can aid our teaching and that's why i push this chrome music lab not only in in my teaching but also in in our school i always demonstrate the use of chrome music lab so that our students are able to identify the sound, especially the tone of the SOPA syllables and how does the teach, how does the student convert their um, uh, art being artistic in music. So that is why I share uh, in this is part of the Chrome Music Lab. So I will share my screen. <coughs> Excuse me. And <coughs> Excuse me. So, Spark Camp Saturday. So, um, but in Philippines, it's already Sunday, um, 12 p.m. So again, I'm teacher Michael Joy Elmitra, or they can call they call me teacher MJ. I'm a Google certified trainer and a coach, and um, I love to train teachers, especially the use of Google Workspace for education with in their daily lives. Because because um, I know that um, teaching um, these tools can really help them to is the their work the use with the use of this uh different tools in google especially this one the chrome music lab when they are teaching music so chrome music lab is a song maker the newest experiment in chrome music lab is a simple way for uh, anyone to make and share a song so once they access the Chrome Music Lab, they can make a lot of music without copyright impairment because um, they can create their own in a Chrome Music Lab. They can download it. They can uh, use it offline, the music they created. They can use it offline. So that is why I promote the, the use of Chrome Music Lab in teaching uh, music. So the description of this session is learning the simple ways to teach the SOFA syllables in elementary level, making a sound using shape and other elements. So I will discuss the um, uh, song maker and the candy key, which which very which is very uh, inter interesting for me. Okay. So why I, I want to discuss this? Because I see different problems in teaching music education. There are six biggest challenges based on the dynamic music center. Number one is the commitment. Many hours of practice are required every week to be able to master the rhythm, techniques, and repertoire. So one of the biggest hindrance is the commitment. Some of the teachers are not musically inclined. So they are focused in teaching mathematics, English, but uh, the music, they cannot uh, teach as equal as <clears throat> as the English, math, 
and science. Number two is priority. Music education is not seen as priority but instead a luxury item because um, they see that if if you want to push well, being a musician, you need to take the course of uh, it that is related in music and that is very expensive. That is very expensive here in the Philippines. Then financial. This is the biggest challenge in music education. Many t- music teachers have trained for many, many years on the instrument to master and techniques and to become proficient. But the problem is there are lack of we are lack of materials in or the musical instrument to be used in the classroom. Even uh, the smallest bell that uh, the education can provide, that the, that the school can provide, we don't have that material. So, uh, because we are struggling in financial. Number four, adoption for students need. Every student has different motivation for learning music and every student and different ways of learning new things. So, in this way, some of students are not interested in music. Remember that one out of ten students are proficient in music. And if you have 40 students, more or less, you have five students that is interested in learning music. So, as a teacher, we need to push through the adoption of uh, music in order for the student to be more interested in teaching um, and learning the music. Next is motivati- motivating students. A motivated student will go far. Even students with moderate talent can succeed with motivation and the drive to practice to improve. And the last one is assessing progress. <clears throat> progress is subjective and can only be measured in cooperating effort, the amount of practice achieved, and the improvement gained over a specific amount of time. So because of the limited time of uh, school hour, so the assessment for progress is not as, uh, as, as progressive as we wanted to because we have very limited time. But we should always remember that after this problem, we should Teachers should understand that there are different benefits in teaching music. Every music, teaching music, educating young children in general music doesn't have to be terrifying. It involves striking a balance between establishing sensible education objectives, learning to create effective lesson plan, and implementing reliable management, and accepting the fun part of personality. There are benefits in teach of teaching music to elementary grades. Why elementary grades? Because I'm I'm an elementary teacher and I see um, from kindergarten up to grade six how um, music can really um, uh, make impact to their life. Number one, music does wonder for your health. Every time I feel that I'm tired, I listen to music and it relieves all the pain that I have. So music can really help even the young children. Their mind can set through. So we need to teach music. Music can make you smarter. You know that um, there are um, many things uh, that we should um, remember. Children are have a multiple intelligences. So the multiple intelligences. Uh, some students are linguistic, some are kinesthetic, and some of them are good in, they can work, um, they can work uh, with music, or they can think more with uh, music. Music can boost your social life. Music can help build confidence. Music teaches patience and discipline. Because when you, you feel so tired, when you feel so uh, when you feel so terrified then and lack of patience, then when when you listen to music, everything calms down. Because that is what I I experience as a teacher.
Music enhances creativity. Music help you to connect with others, and music can help you to learn teamwork. Music is amazing stress reliever. That is why I love teaching music because I know that music can relieve all our stress in work, in life, in family, in everything. And last one is music is fun. This is so fun. Teaching music and learning music is fun. So this is the Chrome Music Lab <clears throat> as aid in teaching music. So I use the Chrome Music Lab to aid my uh, teaching in music so that the student can understand what is the tone of Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, and so on. So um, this is the link experiment with Google. Um, this is what you will see uh, when you go to the link of the Chrome Music Lab. Okay. Then in Chrome Music Lab, you can practice your piano skills yan, by yourself or with a friend on the shared piano. So compose an original song using color and images on the song maker and melody maker. Explore your inner artist with the Kandinsky experiments, which turn anything you draw, line, shape, or scribble into sound. So everything you line, shapes, or whatever, it creates. Uh, it turns into uh, sound. So let's go and let's explore the Chrome Music Lab. So this is the link of the Chrome Music Lab. Um, you can share um, the musiclab.chromeexperiment.com and you will see this shared piano, song maker, rhythm, spectrum, sound waves, arpeggios for for higher level like the high school and this is this one is so fun the kandiski voice spinner harmonic piano roll oscillators strings melody maker and chords and you will see here there are lots of um thing you you can use in teaching so, for example, your student is a fan of drawing, but they are not good in music. So, I use this uh, Kandiski to engage the student in using music. They are good in drawing, but they are not interested in music. Then, you can try this Kandiski so that they can be more engaged in teaching, uh, in learning music. So, what, what I want to say is that um, when you draw a line, it can create whatever the student can it can create even this is a line or a circle or a square once you display is when you want to integrate arts in music is you can try the student to draw something. If, for example, they want to draw the house or a tree or a fish. So we will draw a fish. Then you will play it. Okay. So once you teach the color, So that is what um, can this case. So if you want to attract a student in teaching music, maybe you can start using the Kandiski. So you can slowly integrate um, music within their daily lives because what they write, what they draw, a line, a circle, or what, it can produce music. Okay. So start using Kandiski if they are not interested in learning music. Another thing is 
this one. If you're not good musician but your student want to learn piano, you can go to these chords because it has a piano and there are two, the major and the minor. So once you go to my major and your student wanted to learn uh, major chords in piano, once you hit this one, you will see here the chords, how they place their finger in a keyboard. This is how the chords C place in the keyboard. So this is C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So this, this is how they will learn um, piano without any, any tutor. So they will learn alone. So they, 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 can, they can do it by themselves. So this is chords. And yeah, um, once you hit the minor, if they, are, they master the minor chords, they can go to minor. So for example, C minor, D minor, D minor, F minor. G minor, A minor, B minor. So they can learn with this. So uh, using these chords, piano, um, they can they can uh, work with their self, with them with uh, their self alone. Because, uh, they know how to place their finger in a piano. And the last one is I want you to um, get more exciting excited about the song maker because with the song maker you can use or you can create melody so you, with the settings you can set the length bit of per bars split bits in two so you can start with um middle low high or what chords of the the note okay so yeah, so we did setting. If you want to teach the sofa syllable, do re mi, you can, if if you're not good singer, you can use this. You can put this one is do, re, mi, fa, so, la, e, and the higher do. So once, once you put all this note, then you can change to marimba, to piano, to string, to woodwind, and sing, and also have a uh, electro need blocks kit we have the tempo if you want to slow it uh, make it slow yeah so to 40 to 100 uh 240 so for me i always start with 60 so my student can follow 60 yeah then this is the so i use this one so I always put four note here. So they will recognize the sound of do re mi and do. Because I'm not a good singer, so I can teach you. So this is do re mi fa sol la ti do. Then I will set it into piano, <coughs> and I will set it into kit or conga or electronic. So I will set it into kit. And then once I play it, then I will put here a drum beat. This is a drum. This is a bass and a snare. I can put it here. this one then and put beat to this music so that is how you can use the song maker in teaching so um that is how you use the um Chrome Music Lab. So for more info, you can uh, connect with me with my email, mikejoy.mitra at deped.gov.ph. You can see me at the BIA22. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share with you the, uh, the use of Chrome Music Lab in classroom. So I hope you enjoy this session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.